Today we will talk about the partial equilibrium competitive model. So basically we have several things to talk about. First is the market demand. So in the past we just considered the individual demand and individual supply. Now we go to the market demand. Second we talk about how to determine the price in the short run. Third we take a look at the shift in the demand and supply. Fourth we take a look at the market equilibrium. And fifth we will go to the long run and take a look at the long run supply. Sixth, we will go to the topic called comparative statistics analysis. That means in the equilibrium, if some variable change, what will be the result and what is the effect? Seventh, we will talk about the producer surplus in the long run. Finally, we will take a look at the welfare analysis and two government policies that may affect the welfare. They are price and control and tax incidents. Okay, so let's begin. First is the market demand. So this is the individual demand function. X is a function of PX, the own price, and other end price of other goods, and the income. So in market demand, this is the sum of individual demand for all the consumer. So the market demand, the big capital X is sum of all individual demand. So say you have two individuals. First one is the demand function is like this. And second maybe like this. Okay. Then for the market demand. So this is the horizontal submission of the demand curve. So first in this price range. Only the left con left consumer consume in the market. And after this price level, the consumer to join okay so this is the market demand curve It's the horizontal submission of the individual demand okay so this is how we derive the market demand curves so okay <clears throat> this is the market demand curves which is a relation between the price of the goods with the quantity demanded of the goods so if there are factors other than price of X affecting the demand, say price of other goods or income change, okay, the demand curve will shift to the left or shift to the right. So it depends on the effect on the demand. Whereas if there's change in the price of good X, the demand curve will not shift, rather there will be a movement along the demand curves. So in the individual demand, individual demand functions, so you have the three elasticity concept. So in market demand, you still have three elasticity concepts. Okay, so the elasticity of market demand. So now the market demand is a function of own price, other price of other goods, and the income. Okay, so the price elasticity demand is still partial QD, partial P times P over QD. And the cross price is still partial QD, partial P prime times P prime over QD. Finally, the income elasticity is still partial QD, partial I times I over QD. So nothing changes. You just change the individual demand to be the total demand in the market. Okay, so these are the how you form the market demand. So next we talk about how the price is determined in the short run. So this chapter mainly focus on the competitive markets. So there are several assumptions in the competitive markets. Okay. First, there are large number of firms, and the product are homogeneous. So they are selling the same same goods. Okay. Second assumption is that each of the firm attempted to maximize the profit. Okay, the firm is the profit maximizing agent rather than other objectives. So the firm only maximizes the profit. And C, each firm is the price taker. 
so it means that individual firms will not affect the market price okay if one firm try to allocate the supply maybe increase the supply or decrease the supply but the market price will not be affected and D they are perfect information and finally the transaction are costless so the buyer can always buy the goods they want they don't need to pay extra time or extra cost in searching for the goods okay so similar to the market demand we also have the market supply again market supply is the horizontal submission of the individual supply okay so say this is the individual supply and for the market supply so below this shutdown point the supply is here and after the shutdown point price is here and upper sloping until it reach this point the supply curve will increase so this is the market supply the horizontal submission of individual supply okay so we finished the oh no so how to determine the price so we have finished talking about the demand and supply so the equilibrium price will be generated by the optimal QD equal to the QS at the optimal price. So here, demand is a function of own price, cross price, and the income, while QS, the supply, is the function of price, V and W, the capital input. So therefore, if the QD and QS are equal, the market demand, the equilibrium price can be determined okay so here you can see that the individual demand market demand and the individual firms can be linked each other say this is the indi individual so the demand is like this and this is the market demand with market supply so the market demand and market supply determine the price and quantity such that individual will have this price and the individual will buy this amount of output and similarly this price will determine the production of the firms so this is the short run marginal cost and the firm will produce as E okay so assume the is above the short run average cost so if there is increase in demand, what will be the result? So, so okay, if the individual demand increase, all the individual demand increase, and it will push up the demand. So here we assume all the the market demand increase, not only the certain individuals. Okay, so as a result, the price will be pushed up, and you can see that the price now here. And there will be change in the optimal consumption for individuals and to the sellers okay so price will also increase and the output level also increase along the short run marginal cost so this is the effect if there's increase in the demand in the equilibrium conditions okay so next we will take a look of the shift in the demand and supply So now we know that there are some determinants which shift the demand and supply. So what will shift the demand? First, maybe the income. Second is the price of related goods. So say it's the substitute and complement. And maybe the preference, okay. Sometimes there may be a wave to a certain kind of goods. For the determinant affecting the supply, that may be the input prices, the technology, and the number of producers. Okay, so these all are the non-price determinant that will affect the, the sh will shifting the demand and supply. So it is shift the demand how will the equilibrium price and quantity change 
So it depends on the elasticity of the demand curves. Okay, so if there is change in supply, the effect on price and quantity depends on the elasticity of demand. So say if this is elastic, then you can see the increase in price is very tiny, whereas the change in the quantity will be significant. Second, if the demand is in is relatively inelastic, then you can see that the change in price would be stronger than the case in elastic demand. Okay, so the magnitude of change in demand and supply depends on the price elasticity of demand. So on the other hand, if, if there's change in the demand, the effect on price and quantity depends on the price elasticity of supply. So this is elastic supply, then we can see that the price increased a little bit only. And if it is in elastic supply, then the change in price will be more fluctuating, more unstable. Okay, so usually for the, for the primary commodity, the PED and PES are rel relatively small, so that's why the price of the primary commodity always fluctuate a lot, such as the oil price. Okay. So next, we will use some mathematics to show the market equilibrium conditions. So assume, for, keep, for simplicity, we assume that the demand function is the function of price and other factors. And supply is the function of price and other factors. So we use the alpha and beta to capture the, the non-price determinant for demand and non-price determinant for supply. Okay, at equilibrium, they are equal. So say if there's change in the alpha, so how will the price, equilibrium price change? Okay, so if alpha change, first if alpha change, how will the demand change? This is equal to dd, d alpha. So this is dp, dp d alpha plus d alpha. So this d subscript alpha means round d round alpha. Okay. So in supply, it will the alpha will also affect the supply in in the case that. SP DP D alpha because the alpha will affect the price the price will affect the QS okay and at the equilibrium these two has to be equal as a result we equate these two equations we will get DP D alpha is equal to D alpha is P minus DP okay so this is the change in the price if there's change in alpha well maybe we can go to go further okay so this expression is sometimes difficult to interpret so what should we do okay we would use the elasticity concept so E P alpha is DP D alpha times alpha over P. Okay. So DP D alpha is equal to this D alpha S P minus D P. Then we copy the alpha divided by P. Okay. So the next step I will derive the numerator by Q. And at the same time the denominator. I also need to derive it by Q. Then in this case, what is the numerator? This is partial D partial A times A over Q at a denominator that is partial S partial P times P over Q minus partial D 
partial p times p over q. So this is equal to e q alpha derived by e s p minus e d p. Okay, so the change in the alpha will towards the price. The effect will be the elasticity of the alpha to the quantity derived by the price elasticity of minus the price elasticity of supply minus the price elasticity of demand. So this is the effect of change in price if there is change in alpha.